Hello there guys and welcome back to another Epic in Xreal Maths video. We're looking at inverse hyperbolic functions today. So the inverse hyperbolic functions are of course related to the normal hyperbolic functions. They're the inverse functions of them. So we, we have the notes here, we have the definitions of them. Now we refer to these inverse hyperbolic functions as inverse shine or you can pronounce them R shine, inverse cosh or R cosh inverse than or r than. I prefer r shine, r cosh, r than, but of course you can pronounce them however you would like. And they're defined in terms of logarithms. So these functions, um, unlike trig functions, have like sort of slightly more well-defined definitions of what they are. You know, like, I mean, what is arc sine? Like what actually, well, it's just the inverse function of sine. Well, at least with these ones, with r shine, you have a definition, it's pretty gross, it's the natural log of a bunch of stuff and a square root and something squared. It's not that nice, you know, but it's okay, it's not that bad. Now, this might be expected, I mean, the original hyperbolic functions, shine, cosh and than, are defined in terms of e to the x's. So they're inverse functions because the natural log is the inverse function of e to the x. You might expect the inverse functions of these hyperbolic guys are defined in terms of natural logs instead of exponentials. Makes sense. Now, where do they actually come from? Why is the inverse function of shine the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1? Where is that coming from? We can derive it. That's what we're going to do today. So those are the definitions of them. I would recommend trying to remember them if you can. They're a bit I mean, it's easier said than done, but I would recommend it if you can. So let's remember, and uh, let's remember what shine is. Let's do shine first. So let's say that y is equal to shine x. Okay, hyperbolic sine. Now we know what shine x is. Shine x is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. That's the definition of what shine is. So what we are going to do is we're going to find the inverse function of this because this is shine x. e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 as I've shown in my previous videos, this is shine x. So if we can make this, uh, we can find the inverse function of this, then we can find the inverse function of uh, shine. So how do you find an inverse function? What we want to do is we want to replace the x's with y's and the y's with x's. So basically swap everything around, okay? This is how you find the inverse function of any function. Replace the x's and y's. Now what we want to do is make y the subject again. So we need to do some rearranging. So let's multiply both sides by 2. 2x two equals e to the y minus e to the minus y. Okay. Then what we're going to do is multiply everything by e to the y. So we get 2x e to the y equals e to the y times e to the y, which is e to the 2y, minus e to the minus y times e to the y, that just gives you minus one. The reason why we do this now is because we can create a kind of, it's almost like a quadratic. I do have a video on this as well, solving sort of hidden quadratics. We can almost turn this into a quadratic. So I'm gonna move everything onto the same side. So I'm gonna write e to the two y minus two x e to the y minus one equals zero. So I've just moved the two x e to the y onto the other side. Now what we're going to do is a nice substitution. We're going to choose our favorite letter of the alphabet, u, let u equal e to the y. Why, you say? Well, it's because we can write e to the 2y, if, e, if this is e to the y, we can write this as e to the y squared, e to the 2y is e to the y squared, minus 2x e to the y, well, let's just leave that there for a second, minus 1 equals zero. Now, if u is e to the y, this means that u squared minus 2x times u minus 1 is zero. And this is very nice. We can now solve this using the quadratic formula. So minus b, well b is minus 2x, so u is 2x plus or minus the square root of minus 2x squared, so that's going to give us 4x squared minus 4 
times a, which is 1, times c, which is minus 1. Take the square root of all of that, and we divide by 2a. And a is 1, so it's just dividing by 2. Okay, this means that u is equal to 2x plus or minus the square root of 4x squared minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4, so we get a plus 4 there. And that's divided by 2. And I'm going to come over here. u is equal then to 2x plus or minus the square root of, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a 4 from that square root, and I'm going to write it as 4 times x squared plus 1, like this. Okay, happy with that? We're going to factor the 4 out, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, this then means that u is equal to 2x plus or minus, and now this is the square root of two things multiplying together. So we can write this as the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, because when you have the square root of two things times in together, you can split them into two square roots times in together because of index laws. Okay, so we get this. Now, of course, you might be noticing the square root of 4 can simplify. So we get 2x plus or minus. Well, the square root of 4 is just 2. So 2 root x squared plus 1. And that's being divided by 2. And very nicely for us, um, all of these are multiples of 2, which means u is equal to just 1x plus or minus 1 times the square root of x squared plus 1 because all of the 2's cancel out. Okay, Now, this is brilliant, but we need to now convert back into e to the something or e to the y. We said that u was e to the y. So now we can say that e to the y, because that was u, is equal to x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. Now, if this is the case, then we can then say that, well, let's take the natural log of both sides. But, hold on a second, before we do that, is it x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1? Or is it something else? Is it is it only one solution or is it both? Because right now we have two values. Then we're saying e to the y is x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Or it's x minus the square root of x squared plus 1, or both. But what we do in order to make this a little bit nicer is we say we are only taking, so I'm going to write this, only taking this e to the y as x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. This allows the function to be 1 to 1, and it prevents any weird issues from happening with the plus or minus. We just don't like it, so we are going to remove it. Hello there guys, it's me from the future. I didn't mention this in the video, but I thought it was worth mentioning quickly. The reason why you can't do x minus the square root of x squared plus 1 for this is because e to the y for any real number y must be positive. And for any real number for x, x minus the square root of x squared plus 1 is always negative. Check out the graph here right now showing you there is no value for x positive negative. There is no value that exists for x that allows you to have a positive value for x minus the square root of x squared plus 1. This is a big problem because we're about to take the natural log of it. You cannot take the natural log of a negative number. So it's not even a preference thing. It's not even to make it nice. It's also for the simple fact that it doesn't work work if you use x minus the square root of x squared plus 1. Anyways, back to the video. So, if e to the y is simply x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, that means making y the subject, taking natural logs of both sides, we get that y is equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. That is the inverse function of shine. So in other words, inverse shine of x is by definition, so I'll do a triple line, the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, That is how you prove that formula. Uh, you can do the exact same thing with cosh and than. So if you do want videos on this, let me know. But you do the exact same thing. It's the exact same logic with all of them and you do get slightly different answers but really it's the exact same method so we can potentially do it in the future but that's the gist of it here you obviously use inverse hyperbolic functions in order to solve trigonometric equations but also or not trigonometric but hyperbolic equations or exponential equations 
Another thing that these things are incredibly useful for is the fact that these things differentiate to algebraic terms. And of course, it appears as though they do because they're defined in terms of just natural logs, x's, square roots, x squared. So actually, these things have algebraic derivatives, which are really good because it means that there are some algebraic derivatives that exist that integrate back to the inverse hyperbolic functions. So there are many um, integrals which we can do by using one, hyperbolic substitutions, but two, just standard results. There are some integrals that just simply integrate to inverse shine. Nice, we're finished, we're done, we're happy. So we'll also look at those in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. I highly appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.